G'day Spuddies. It's uh, the third day of Starchy Marchy. Uh, it's going well, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I've had a few people write to me and I've seen in the news, it's been in the news everywhere in Australia, the CSIRO low carb diet book has been released. And it's uh, according to the news of Australia, it is the new big thing. Everyone needs to follow the CSIRO low carb diet. Get the book. Why is it a big thing? Well, the CSIRO. First of all, CSIRO stands for Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation. It's a government agency for scientific research in Australia. And they have done lots of good things uh, in the past. Uh, diet related stuff. Perhaps not so much, but they have done, they have invented lots of cool stuff and they have a very good reputation in Australia uh, for lots of different reasons. But anyway, they've written this low carb diet book. It's from the CSIRO, so it must be right, right? Well, so I've looked them up. The CSIRO low carb diet book provides another great option for people concerned about weight management or type 2 diabetes goes on to talk about it being all uh, all scientifically based and proven and all of this sort of stuff and uh, provides provide a clear and comprehensive overview of the science and benefits behind the low carbohydrate diet so they developed the CSIRO low carb diet book there you go so uh, one news article that I read and actually lots of news articles that I read uh, talked about this book being based on one particular study. So let's look into it. Uh, here's what I found. So the study is, oops, I have to go all the way back to the top of the page here. It's called A Very Low Carbohydrate, Low Saturated Fat Diet for Type 2 Diabetes Management, a Randomized Trial. It's by Jeannie, Jenny or Jeannie Tay and others as well as Grant Brinkworth, who's one of the authors of the book. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, first thing I do when I look at studies is I want to find out about funding, see if there's any biases in, in, the, uh, in the funding that's happening. So the funding of this study, uh, this study was supported by the National Health and Medical Research Project Council Project Grant. Uh, so... Where does that money come from? So I look in there. Uh, if you want to get involved as a... How can you put this? So now there's another page. I've gone into the National Research Funding, whatever that was that I just said. I've skipped to a new page on the computer now. But there's a page where if you want to partner uh, with this organisation to give funding, then you can if you're a philanthropist, a government, or a non-government non organisation. In other words, anyone who's got money is able to partner up and fund studies. So the fifth point, I'm going to try and figure out how to put photos on this video. So hopefully I'll be able to give you little screen grabs of what I'm reading here. But if not, you can I'll put links in the description anyway so you can go and look at what I'm looking at. Uh, so, fifth point is become involved in a specific research project by partnering with researchers who then apply for NHMRC funds. Uh, in other words, any organisation can give money to NHMRC uh, with the specific aim of then passing that money on to a specific researcher or organisation who's doing a specific study that you want to fund. So, uh, yeah, so you can, so then this funding organisation back to the original study was supported by the National Health and Medical Research Council project it could quite possibly, conceivably, be uh, just a way to get funding to studies without having to declare that this funding came from this specific organisation. Uh, it goes on there to say, in, in the first one, it says, no sponsor, in the study itself, sorry, no sponsor or funding source had a role in the design or conduct of the study, of the study collection management and analysis or interpretation of the data or preparation, review or approval of the manuscript. Well, okay, maybe not. Other than, of course, the uh, implicit uh, inferred pressure that comes from knowing that if you deliver a study or uh, a result of the study that doesn't 
show anything in favour of the uh, of the people who funded the study, then perhaps your ability to pay your mortgage might dry up because they're not going to contribute money to further studies that you want to do. So, yeah, I guess they I can believe that they didn't sit at the table with them and say this is how we're going to do things, but. If you know where your funding's coming from, in the back of your mind, there's going to be, you know, there's there's plenty of studies that have looked into this that uh, where the funding comes from affects how studies are done and what the results show. So uh, there you go. It also says duality of interest, no potential conflicts of interest relevant to this article were reported. Okay, they weren't reported. That doesn't mean they didn't exist. But hey, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. All right, so. Uh, yeah, if you want to fund a study, then you can uh, easily just contact NHMRC and, uh, and you can fund it indirectly through them and then the, st the people who do the study can just reference them instead of your organisation. It makes it look a bit more legit, don't you think? Alright, now I've gone on and read another, I've, I've looked up the, the funding of uh, CSIRO Industry Partnerships. Here's a new article by the way, a news article on the ABC. CSIRO Industry Partnerships help science agency cope with funding cuts. So a couple of years ago, this was majority funded by the government, this agency. And the government of Australia basically stripped as much funding as they could. They just they gutted the organisation, they gutted the funding and left them with not much to do. So as a result, the organisation is trying to stay afloat and they've decided to partner with industry. Uh, so a quote from the article. The value of CSIRO's partnerships with industry has surged by a third from $135 million in 2013-14 to $181 million in 2014-15. I dare say, it's 2017 now, I dare say the, the uh, value of the corporate partnerships has gone up. Uh, Dr. Keith McLean, the CSIRO's manufacturing director, said the organisation is investing in growth areas which are more likely to get a commercial return. In other words, they are doing their best to make money out of partnering with corporate, uh, corporate uh, bodies uh, and to produce favourable science, so they get paid for it. That's, that's the way I read into that. So, uh, a lot of this, you know, there's, we have to put a lot of blame on the government for creating a situation where a, a previously uh, independent um, science organisation is these days far from independent. We, we know that because of their funding model. Uh, Alright, so uh, here's a page from the CSRO's own website. Nutrition, the nutrition and health section of the website says the first thing it says, if your goal is demonstrating the health benefits of existing or new food ingredients, foods, diets, diets, or technology products that are cost efficient and appealing to your end user, then CSIRO can help. So, if, if you're a food producer or trying to promote a diet, CSIRO can help you make it look good. That's how I read into that. We can help you produce some favourable science so that you can sell your products. Is that, can you be any more blatant? Alright, so who does a low carb diet uh, benefit then? What does a low carb diet promote? Uh, if you're going to eat a low carb diet, you typically, you can do it on plant foods, but you're going to have to include a lot of oils, but typically a low carb diet includes lots of meat, dairy and egg products. So I thought, I wonder if these industries have partnerships. So I looked up the meat industry, and here we go. CSIRO, on the Meat Industry Services website, meatupdate.csiro.au. CSIRO Food and Nutritional Services has over 30 years of technical information prepared for the Australian meat and livestock industries in the form of reports, newsletters, blah, 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 blah. CSIRO and Meat and Livestock Australia have been working together for a long time. Uh, no doubt producing that science that we were just talking about. Uh, science. <laughs> Alright, another page from their industry, uh, from the Meat Industry Services website, is 
it says uh, our, about our partners, there's three partners there. One of them is CSIRO. CSIRO Food and Nutritional Sciences is Australia's largest and most diversified food research organisation. It is committed to turning scientific research into innovative studies for the food industry in Australia and overseas. Through its science, it supports the health and well-being of consumers. Uh, I don't know if that last sentence is right, but yeah, they certainly work for the food industry, as it says there. <laughs> they don't work for the consumers, they work for the food industry. The food industry funds them, the food industry gets the results they want. What else is a low-carb product? Dairy products are low-carb. So, get back to the CSIRO's own website now. Dairy, creating new opportunities for industry. The first sentence on there, CSIRO's Food Innovation Centre explores the science of milk to create commercial opportunities for new dairy products. In other words, they've got a partnership with Dairy Australia and the whole aim of the partnership is to promote and help Dairy Australia make money. That, that is the aim, according to that first sentence. That's what they're there for. So, CSIRO. Low carb, working with the low the organisations that produce the low carb uh, info. I've got another article here. CSIRO and Fonterra partner to drive sustainable dairy innovation. Fonterra is a big uh, dairy organisation, and here we go. Fonterra and uh, and and CSIRO are partnered up and have been for a long time. And the the whole aim of the partnership is to help dairy make money. <coughs> All right. What's another typical low carb product? It is eggs, is another. All right, and here we are. We've got a partnership between eggs and the CSIRO, between the Australian egg industry. And they've actually produced a, an ad advertisement, sorry, a YouTube video. Uh, they've produced a little promotional video. Uh, it's called CSIRO links higher egg consumption to better quality diet. And a highlighted sentence here. The Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation and Professor Manny Noakes have revealed new findings which show that higher egg consumption is associated with having a better quality diet. And then there's a whole, quite obviously, you can, you can go and watch the video there if you want, quite obviously paid for. There's sponsorship and branding all over this video. It's a bought and paid for advertisement that CSIRO has produced for the egg industry. Uh, this is, this is blatant advertising. This is egg industry funding. Goes to this ad so that you know, these people can pay their mortgages, like I said. That's what it's all about. All right, so clear bias, clear conflict, conflict of interest involved here. So let's go back to the study that supposedly prompted the CSIRO and, and Grant Brinkworth, 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 Grant Brinkworth, uh, yeah, there he is, Grant Brinkworth. Uh, so this study supposedly prompted them to produce, to confirm that, oh, low-carb diets are the best. We proved it with this thing, so now we have to make this book. All right. Low-carb diet. Let's just go straight to this. We've been through conflict of interest. Let's just go straight to the study design. The low-carb diet... Uh, Produce, uh, used 14% of energy as, as carbohydrate, 20% of energy as protein, and 58% of energy as fat. Yeah, that's fairly low carb. I think probably true low carbers like keto people and that would probably prefer f less than 14%, but that's still pretty low. So we can probably say that's, if it's not truly low carb, then it's close to it, tr close to being low carb. Uh, yeah, so there you go. 58% of energy is fat. Then you move on to what they call the high-carb diet. High-carb, I presume they're supposed to mean low-fat too. The high-carb diet, 53% of energy is carbohydrate, 17% is protein, and 30% is fat. Now here, we have a real problem with this study now. A true low-carb diet should have at least 80% of of energy coming from carbohydrates. This one only has, where was it, 53%. At least 80% should be carbohydrate for it to be called a truly low carb, uh, sorry, high carb, low fat diet. Should be at least 80% of energy coming from carbohydrates, but this is only 53%. Then we've got 70% of energy is protein. Again, 
wrong, not as far wrong, but at, at most 10% of uh, energy should come from protein in a truly high carb diet. Uh, that, this is the diet, this is the, these are the ratios that worldwide nutrition, whole food plant-based experts agree on that. 80% carbohydrates, ma minimum 80% carbohydrates, maximum 10% protein, and maximum 10% fat. And this diet used a 30% fat, this sorry, study used a 30% fat diet. So, what does that mean? It means that they didn't test the things that they said they did. Quite simply, it means that they produced a study that their sponsors wanted them to produce. They produced the study that would give the findings that the, uh, that the industry that funded it, I presume, sorry, this is just my speculation, I could be wrong, but it seems pretty obvious to me that if, anyway, even if the industry didn't fund it, the CSIRO has corporate ties with these industries. So they're not going to write a book that's going against the industries. They're going to use a dodgy study to justify their writing of this book. So they've used a study that does not test the things that they say it tests. If they wanted to f compare a, a low-carb diet with a high-carb diet, then they would have used that 80-10-10 ratio, and they didn't. They used a diet that is much higher in fat than any whole food plant-based expert would think is appropriate. So, uh, shitty study. It doesn't, you can't take anything from it. And in the end, there wasn't a lot of difference between the two groups anyway. The, uh, the high fat group did have slightly better uh, diabetes medication results. They were able to reduce their, they had similar weight loss results, but the, the high, uh, High fat group was uh, low carb. High fat group was able to uh, slightly uh, reduce their sorry reduce their diabetes medication requirements slightly more than the other group. So, but really, it doesn't tell us anything because they didn't test what they said they were testing. So, in the end, we've got a whole book that's going crazy in Australia that's uh, sold out in lots of bookshops, and uh, and it's based on a dodgy study that uh, really shouldn't be considered as, as being good science and most likely industry influenced science and certainly an industry influenced book. Uh, they're not going to produce, CSIRO is not going to produce a book that will impact negatively on the meat industries, the dairy industries, the egg industry. It's just not going to happen. If they do then they can't pay their bills anymore so human nature, they're not going to go against them. Anyway, there you go. Uh, CSIRO low carb diet book. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Grant Brinkworth, you're better than this. Well, maybe not, but it, you should be. <laughs> Come on, Grant Brinkworth. Come on, CSIRO. Do something real. Do something that that's actually backed up by science. Stop misleading the public. People trust you, and you're letting the public down. Stop it. <sighs> All right. Uh, starchy marchy, eat your spuds everyone and enjoy uh, and get along and there's Mandy. Go hard, Andrew. <laughs> you show them. You tell them. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, there you go. Like, share, subscribe. Go to spudfit.com and sign up for the newsletter and spud up everyone. This video has been long enough. I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying starchy marchy. Starchy marchy. <laughs> <laughs> go and enjoy your run, Mandy. I will. Bye everyone. Spud up. <laughs>